It's nearly Christmas. Today I am feeling super festive and we're going to make a Christmas pudding. And we're just going to make it up as we go along. So you're going to watch me trying and possibly failing to make a Christmas pudding. I think it's going to be okay. So I've got my pudding basin here. Now in case you're wondering what I'm talking about by Christmas pudding, I think Christmas pudding's fairly well known. The term pudding in the UK has just almost as many meanings as the word thing. And here are a few of them on screen right now. So yeah, this is going to be a steamed suet pudding that's very rich, very full of fruit, and very dark. So let's get cracking with that. And I'm making this up as I go along. So all I'm gonna do is put my dry and kind of semi-dry ingredients into this, my pudding basin, until it's full. Then I'll mix it, put it back in here, and steam it. And in case it helps, I will weigh in these ingredients. So if you want to replicate this, assuming it turns out okay, you'll be able to replicate this by following the recipe that I'm kind of just throwing together right now. First off, some dried unsweetened cranberries. Just, I think, 25 grams. We can't go too overboard on any one ingredient because there's gonna be a lot of different stuff in here. This is dried mixed fruit, which is a mixture of sultanas, raisins, candied peel. I think there's some dried apple in there as well. Okay, and for this, we are having, I think, about 50 grams. I've got 55, but I would say 50 grams. Next, walnuts. So just some walnut halves. I think that'd be quite nice. And I'm just gonna crush them into slightly smaller pieces. Let's say 30 grams of walnuts, chopped up small. Next, an apple, which I'm just gonna grate directly in there. But we'll weigh it just as we go. I'm grating it with the peel on because it's all gonna cook down. So that is nearly 70 grams of apple. Probably exactly 70 grams if I get those, yeah, those bits in. 70 grams of apple. Soft brown sugar, 50 grams. Suet. So I'm using beef suet. You can get a vegetable version of these little shredded suet pieces. Now this is obviously adding the fat to the recipe that it will need. So again, I'm gonna go for 50 grams of suet. The zest of one orange. Now I don't know that this is actually gonna weigh anything but it will try. So just gonna have the zest off the outside of this orange. You could use a little grater to do this, a fine grater. But since I've got this zesting tool, we'll use that. Now it is gonna have a weight, but yeah, it's just one orange. You could use clementine zest here and that would be extra festive. Obviously an unwaxed orange is best if you can find that. Well, that turned out to be seven grams of orange zest. Now, at the moment, that's just fruit and whatnots. We need some flour. Self-raising flour. 50 grams. And one slice of wholemeal bread. Now, you could whiz this up in a blender if you want to, but actually, I'm just gonna cut mine up on the board here into tiny little cubes. Stale bread would probably be slightly better. Just gonna keep on running the knife through that to make not exactly breadcrumbs, just little chunks of bread. And when these are cooked into the thing, they're gonna soak up all these flavors from the fruit and the other things which we're about to add. That's about 40 grams, I think. 38 grams of fresh breadcrumbs. Getting quite full now, but don't worry. Now we've got some chestnuts here. I think we'll just have about half a dozen chestnuts. And again, I'm gonna chop these up nice and small. These are pre-packed, ready-cooked, shelf-stable chestnuts. If I hadn't been moving house, we might have been able to store some of the chestnuts I found earlier in, in autumn. And uh, we might have been able to actually cook and use those fresh wild chestnuts, but sadly it wasn't practically possible to do that because of moving house and such. About 50 grams of chestnuts. 50 grams of quite a lot of things, isn't it? Cherries. Glacé cherries. What have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's go for eight. And these I'm gonna leave in fairly big pieces because it's gonna be nice to discover a big chunk of cherry in there. So quarters probably, or thereabouts. 
42 grams. Now, if you're wondering how this is even gonna work, these sorts of recipes where it's just really throw everything together, this is how a lot of these puddings were just invented. It's in medieval times, people had all sorts of ingredients, little bits of everything, and just threw it together. And sometimes it worked. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So girthy carrot and sure carrot is a vegetable but you can have carrot cake can't you so carrot is going to go in there this will add some sweetness an earthy flavor and a bit of moisture oh what a surprise about 50 grams of carrot right so all of the dry ish ingredients into a big mixing bowl going to mix it up in a big bowl because that gives me the space to work properly so we'll just zero the scales again because we've got a few more things to add. So I've got some thick cut orange marmalade. Right, big old spoonful of this lovely thick cut marmalade. Happens to be about 60 grams, 67 grams. Now normally I would put black treacle in a Christmas pudding but I don't have any and I'm not gonna go out for it. What I do have Lurking at the back of my cupboard, I picked this up when I was in the Southampton, the Portswood International Food Store. This is carob extract, kind of similar to a black treacle. So this is a syrupy, dark, molasses type stuff. So we're gonna use this instead. So that's about 55 grams of that. Maybe I should have tasted it before I put it in, but I have had this before. Yeah, tastes a lot like black treacle. Perhaps actually slightly sweeter. Now, spice. Ground mixed spice, which is a mixture of, let me read the ingredients. Cinnamon, coriander seeds, dill seeds, ginger, cloves, and nutmeg. So mixed spice is, you might know that as pumpkin spice or pudding spice. Sometimes these blends are a bit different from each other, but generally they all have the kind of same flavor vibe, the same Christmas cake sort of spice. That's about three level teaspoons full of spice in there. Now, if you can't get ground mixed spice, you could just mix up a bit of cinnamon, nutmeg, a tiny bit of ground cloves, and maybe some ground ginger, and that will give you very much the same kind of vibe. So now we need to put some liquid in here. And I've got for this a Christmas ale, all good in the pud, Christmas pudding ale. Now, that wasn't intentional. I just wanted some beer to put in here, but it just happens that I've got this, and really it's about the most suitable beer I've got to go in here. I was, normally use a bit of stout or something like that, but here's what we got, all good in the pud by Stuart Brewing. This is chilled down to cellar temperature. I think we might have another video about cellar temperature at some point in the future. Why, a lot of people think that in Britain we drink warm beer. In fact, ales are typically consumed at cellar temperature, which is not warm, but it's not ice cold. Anyway, let's give that a taste. Oh, oh yeah, that's nice. Whatever's in there that's Christmas pudding is actually quite subtle. There is a little spiciness to it. Fruitiness on the start, malts, and a spicy Christmas cakey sort of tail end. Right, so beer. Let's figure out how much beer we're gonna put in there. I'm gonna start off with about 100 ml, which will be about 100 grams because that's more or less how liquids certainly mostly water type liquids work and we're just going to mix this together and i'm going to look for a particular consistency so we're going to have one medium egg so one medium egg okay so that's quite wet now which is not a bad thing because there's flour in here to absorb some of the liquid. So I am gonna add another 50 grams of self-raising flour, just really because all of that seemed a little bit wet and incoherent. We'll see how this comes out. Yeah, that's looking a little bit more like a dough now. It should be wet like this anyway, or else it won't work, because we're gonna steam this, and the steam is gonna lift it first, and then set it. That's good. Ground almonds, about 40 grams. Looking good. So that looks desperately wet at the moment, but don't worry. 
This is essentially a cake batter. Right, let's get the bowl prepared. This is the same bowl I measured out the ingredients in, which I've just washed up quickly. And I'm just gonna take a little knob of butter. And really the best way to do this is with your hands, especially when you've got, this is really cold butter. So I'm just gonna work it onto the bowl and thoroughly grease the inside of this bowl with butter. And this is best done with cold butter and a cold dish because the warmth of your hands will spread the butter around, but then the cool of the dish will keep it in place until we get the dough in. So thoroughly buttered pudding basin. In goes the pudding mix. And if I've gauged this right, it should fill it not quite to the top. That's pretty good actually. Want a little bit of headspace in there for it to rise. So now to prepare that for steaming. So baking parchment paper. Now, they always say to leave a little pleat in there for expansion. I don't think we're strictly going to need that today because there's quite a lot of headspace in there, but we'll do it anyway. Some nice strong foil. And get that over the top. And there's too much covering on there at the moment, but stay with me. String. Need about enough string to go around twice. Tie a loop near one end, but with enough on there to tie onto. And then thread that first through that little loop there and pull it tight. We'll go all the way back round again. Wrap that through several times and pull tight and then just knot that off. Granny knot is perfectly acceptable here. Now, like I say, I've put too much, there's too much skirt on here, but that's fine because I'm gonna bring that back up and that'll hold the string in place. So that is now ready to go in a water bath. So you could boil that in a pan or steam it in a steamer. I'm gonna do it in the pressure cooker. About 500 ml of water in my pressure cooker. It might need more than that. So just to stop that banging around on the bottom, I'm gonna use my off cut of string to stop that rattling too much on the bottom of the metal. Think of it more water. So about another 250 ml of water, so it's about 750 in total. I'm gonna to steam that for an hour. So a bit of cleaning up to do. The process will be made more pleasant by chef's privilege finishing off this Christmas pudding ale. Cheers. Oh yeah, that is good. Right then, the moment of truth. Oh, okay, well there it is, steaming hot. Now the reason for using foil and parchment, by the way, parchment protects the pudding from the foil. The foil protects the everything from moisture ingress. Okay, whoa. Well, it looks good. Onto a plate. Is it going to be? Hey, that looks good. I don't know why I sound surprised. There is Christmas pudding, and that looks like Christmas pudding should. That was a slightly wobbly, isn't that nice? Right, let's get that to the table and give it a taste. Alrighty then, Christmas pudding. Wow. And custard is being served in a gravy boat and no one can stop me. Looks okay, doesn't it? Yeah. Now I just made this up as I went along. I just literally just threw things into a mixture and steamed it and here we are. About that much? Yeah. So let's have a look. Oh, look at that. So moist. There we go. So, yeah, look at that. That's really rich and dark. Let me shine and let me know what you think. I hope it's okay. Like I say, I just made this up as I went along. Mm, very nice. Yeah? Yeah. It's really nice and 
tender, isn't it? It's mm. actually, you know, sometimes Christmas pudding can be a bit dry and tough. Not tough, yeah, but no, dense. This is, nice. this is really light and soft. So there we go. Christmas pudding, you just watched me make that up. The extracted recipe from this video is in the video description. So I think it only remains for me to say, or for both of us to say, Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. And thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.